All right, uh, let's look at that Sea Glide. Doesn't need a lot to make it. Lubricant, we can get... In fact, I think we have enough... Well, might have enough materials. You make a lubricant from a creep vine seed cluster, which I should have one left in here. Yeah, I think they've dumbed down a lot of these recipes. They made them easier to make, which... I'm not exactly sure how I feel about that yet, but it's okay for the time being. Might not like it later. Lubricant is essential in construction of vehicles and power plants. Battery, copper wire, and titanium. Um, so really I need three copper and two of these mushrooms. And we'll have that done with. The sea glide is, uh, we, it might get l used less as we go on, but for the time being, this is going to be our primary form of locomotion until I'm able to make an actual submarine. And as such, it's going to be pretty important. Another cave. Get nervous about those caves, you know. Like right there. There's a dude right there. And if I go in there, he's going to chase me. Oh, also, yeah, this game has some pretty good music. I, I was making fun of the, the dubstep stuff earlier, but... I do actually like the music in this game a lot. It's pretty good. Oxygen. I noticed uh, going through some of the blueprints, there's quite a few new things, new blueprints that I've never seen before, so... As we go along in the series, uh, once again, not knowing how long it's going to be, I'll explore some of these uh, new blueprints. And, I mean, we'll look at the old ones, too, because I'm treating this like you've never seen the game before, so if you haven't, all those things might be kind of interesting to you. All right, one copper. We got some more wreckage down here. Might get some more Seamoth. Hearts. That would be a good one. I don't really need that. These aren't really like big wreckages. The kind of low tier ones, but. You never know. Occasionally you will find a little bit of stuff. That is a deeper area that we don't need to visit yet. Might be getting a little dark. Yeah, nighttime's gonna hit soon. And I think I gotta go pretty close to some shallows to get over this. I don't really wanna do that yet. So I'm just gonna keep focusing on that sea glide. I do hope they added, uh, with the full release, I do hope they added a lot of stuff. It's, um,. There we go. I think I have enough to make it. The way the game's always kind of been, while they have been adding a lot of cool features, and you know, slowly building the game as a whole, it's always sort of had the same feeling to it and the same uh, build up, the same progression. That's what I'm looking for. So, I'm noticing they've been changing a lot of recipes and how they play out, and. I guess I don't know it yet, but I'm I, I'm hoping that they make the game, the progression a little bit different, because it was it was weird sometimes. To say that. Oh, that's a creep vine seed cluster I left lying around. New creature discovered. Cook you up real quick. And eat him. Yum. I don't even have to go here, I can go into my base. The danger with the base, of course, is now that it's nighttime. The base is built in battery, 75 power here. But as we craft things, it's gonna go down. But it won't go down too much, so it'll be fine. It goes down five every time you craft something. All right, so. 
what else do we need? Oh, that's it. The Sea Glide will increase your effective exploration range. For your safety, please pack supplies for long journeys and stay within five kilometers of the nearest life pod or habitat. All right. So with the Sea Glide, the uh, air bladder isn't, I wouldn't say it's useless, but it's definitely less important. I did not mean to press that. It's definitely less important now. So I'm going to put it away for the time being. It does take up a considerable portion of your inventory, but to be expected. We're also going to, I don't know what I'm doing here. Messing up my inventory, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, we are going to swap that in there, because I don't need that right now. Honestly, I don't know if I need that for much of anything, but maybe surprise later. So, let's take a look at this thing. Does a couple of cool things, so this is our normal movement speed. It's decently quick, especially with those flippers we added, but press 5. We are now moving very quickly. It does consume power. It's got a uh, battery in it. And we can right click for a flashlight. There is a separate flashlight as well that you can craft for just just plain flashlight. We could have made that a while ago actually. Um, but I never thought to do it. But this is a flashlight built in. So it's kind of a two in one component. Now you can see on the top, there's a topographical map. I wouldn't say it's entirely useful, but it is cool looking. But all in all, this thing is just fast. Um, and until we get any other better propulsion ability, this is good for getting us out of deep areas, just like that air bladder was. Sorry, we, we're gonna hit we're gonna hit little lag spots when we hit the surface. It's just kind of not super well optimized right there. And we're gonna put that up. Listen to our radio real quick. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a really cool thing, and even after we get better movement abilities, it's still a useful personal movement device that you can keep in your inventory, so we may still keep it anyway. This is Ozzy from the cafeteria. What the hell, guys? They didn't want us this might happen. Our pod was almost crushed by the Seamoth Bay on the way down. Now we're hanging on the edge of a cave system, and this grim-looking snake thing is trying to eat through the hull. Come get us already. <laughs> Signal location uploaded to PDA. Uh, under attack? I don't know if I want to mess with that. Oh, I know where they're at. Yeah, we, we don't want to mess with that. Not until we get our own submarine. So, yeah. Um, I think the next thing we're going to do, now that I have propulsion, is we're going to check out that area over there, Live Pod 3. See if there's anything else. Advanced wiring kit. That thing requires a good chunk of gold. Uh, oh yeah, this Pathfinder tool looks like a new thing. I don't remember this. So there used to be a, um, I guess you'd call it like a breadcrumb tool. It was like a, it was a, a line that you could use when you went down in caves. The idea was you could follow the line back up. Looks like they've replaced it with a Pathfinder tool. Deploys holographic Pathfinder discs. So, kind of cool. Um, there are these pipes, which are kind of interesting. I, uh, I might end up using them for building. And they're kind of useful for deep cave systems, so at that point, usually you want to just use a submarine. But if you're in a really tight cave system, I guess they're useful. I never use them much. Grab trap. It's more of just like a physics toy than a, a tool. Alright. Yeah. So, let's go for that one now that it's daytime. Now you notice the power is going down. Um, what the game used to do is batteries used to be disposable. Once they were empty, they just disappeared. They've changed that now. Batteries are now rechargeable, both power cells and batteries. 
We do not have a battery recharger yet, so we would have to treat them as disposable at the moment. Until we get that. And I don't remember exactly where they are. Where, like, the blueprints for that are. Or they even could have changed it, too. Oh, is this, oh this is cool. We're not going to get too close to this. But... Hopefully it'll go off in a second. I think it's about to. Yeah. I think the actual damage range is... I'm a little bit far away from it, so I think I'm safe. But that is a geyser. It emits hot uh, water. Very dangerous to be near without any protection. Although, with the correct tools, we can actually use it as a power source the heat coming from it. So it's kind of cool. Ooh, this is a scannable item. Not entirely useful, but it's kind of cool. Trash can just allows you to throw away things you don't want without leaving them all over the place. Beacons are pretty self-explanatory. It is a beacon. Is that something else? I thought I saw something. Maybe not. Oh, actually, he's preoccupied. Let me scan him. Stalker, that's what they're called. He may turn on us in a second, but he is preoccupied by that metal in his mouth. So, uh, they are slightly aggressive, though if they have metal in their mouth, they're not really that aggressive. They will try to attack you. You can distract them with metal. There's the salt I needed. Oxygen. Let's grab a second one. But they like metal. And we'll have some uses for them later, but the, for the time being, not much out of them. Alright, life pod three. Already scanned that, but we get some titanium out of that. Open data box. Huh. Compass blueprint. We should check out these, uh, these text logs, because these are story things, and I'd love to learn about them, actually. Keep in mind, anytime you go in your PDA, you are still in-game, so I usually try to avoid it. Some more salt. I usually try to avoid it unless I'm in a base, because you'll be consuming oxygen if you're underwater, if nothing else, so you're on a timer, and you have the potential to get attacked by things that might be near you. Oh yeah, he's after us now. Luckily with the sea glide, we should be able to out outswim him? Yeah. Definitely. Sorry if I've been a little sporadic talking about this game. There's so much to talk about. And I kind of forget that while I built up this knowledge over the years of this game being in an early access... If you're watching this brand new, you have absolutely no idea what's going on in a lot of these cases, so apologies. I'm going to be wrapping it up pretty soon because I'm at about an hour and a half. That's about what I wanted to play today. But uh, I would like to, you know, just have a general idea of what you guys think. If you, if you like it, let me know. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know as well. Welcome aboard, Captain. Thank you. All right. What am I doing here? I did want to make that high capacity O2 tank. But I'd have to go and get some more quartz. Um, make glass from two quartz. Which means I need four quartz. Yeah, let's, uh... Let's finish up... By getting some more quartz. Well, here, let's look at these data bank things. Yep, 
you just remember, if you want to read any of this stuff, pause it. I'll try to make sure it's on the screen long enough for you to pause it recently. Or decently, I should say. Stalker. Yeah, this guy is scary. So, it appears to be attracted to titanium deposits, which tends to sharpen and put stress on its teeth. As with many predators, it may be possible to temporarily distract hungry stalkers by feeding them. You can actually, I think, feed them fish, if I'm not mistaken. The teeth are unusually hard and fast-growing. The elongated snout can deliver huge biting pressure to larger attackers. It's got night vision, dorsal ridges, pelvic fins... But, its teeth are actually an item it can drop, and they're useful for us. Alright, data downloads. LifePod 6 transmission origin. Stress signal has been received from LifePod 6, but the attached coordinates were corrupted. Last available photographic data has been downloaded and analyzed. So it's in the uh, blood kelp biome. Crew requested assistance in navigating radiation, which means... That they're probably in a radiated area, sunk to approximately 100 meters, located in an area with dense, dense with red grass near a number of natural arches and rock stacks. Alright, so we can use this to help find uh, LifePod 6. It's all sort of flavor text, but I would consider it roughly part of the story, you know. And these are crew logs... Uh, what is this? Oh, I don't know. I don't know if we had this one read to us. I think it got cut off because of a, uh, you know, scripted event. You really think it'll carry two of us? Your regular sea glide tows a mass of 80 kilograms at over 30 kilometers an hour. The power cell rig to this one should double that. You think there's something out there that's faster? Oh, sure. And that's assuming it doesn't overload three meters from the life pod. You're calm about this. I'm seeing the engineering problem. If I stop seeing the maths, I'll be terrified. <laughs> the SEMA. Yeah, so this is our submarine we're going to be getting in a bit. Probably next time, if I can find enough blueprints. SEMA is a one-person vehicle with an independent replaceable power cell fitted in the rear in a fully customizable design. Um, they actually did a lot from when they first introduced this uh, submarine to make it pretty versatile and like they say customizable it's for it's it's actually quite cool i like i like what they did with it low power multi-directional thrusters enable it to function equally well in sea or space environments we're not going to be dealing with space much i don't think most long-range vessels carry at least two vehicles of this class to facilitate the exploration and exploitation of small astronomical bodies however they can also be fabricated at a standard mobile vehicle bay um, so important stats here are uh, crush depth is 200 meters below sea level. That's our max depth before it starts taking damage. Um, it can be upgraded, but that's where we start. And it has four upgrade slots. Seamoth may be modified by installing upgrade modules. Increased cargo storage, superior power, pressure and collision compensation, enhanced sonar and defensive capabilities. These modules may only be manufactured at a moon pull outfitted with a vehicle modification station. It goes anywhere but land. Uh, let's see. Radiation suit. Helps you with radiation. Alien eggs. Um, not really anything we're going to deal with now, but we can deal with them later. Let's get rid of all this. Come on. I just want to get the little the circle with the notification out of the way. Trash can gets rid of items, releases their atoms into the atmosphere. That sounds unhealthy. Ah, all right. Probably want to make that compass. Might be useful for navigation. And, yeah, that's just telling us. I think we can craft things or that we got these things. Let me show you uh, the bleach thing. It's a, it'll be a quick thing here. So, make some bleach. Bleach 
is an essential chemical used for cleaning wounds and purifying water. And like she said, we can make water. More than those bladder fish thing get us. The day's water ration ahead of time will help ensure against dehydration and eventual death. Seek fluid intake. All right. Vital signs stabilizing. Good enough to me. So before I got into all that lore, let's let's go get some quartz. I need four quartz. That'll get me some glass. All right. And luckily, having the sea glide will allow us to swim a bit faster. I think we can use it to outrun those explosive dudes. Dudes, fish. Fish dudes. Batteries are actually pretty easy to make, so... I'll try to be less stingy with them if I can. Yeah. Yeah, we can outrun them now, so... This is when you'd want to actually start trying to get resources from them, is when you can outrun them. But... Well, we made the repair thing early. In fact, I normally never make it anywhere near that early. Alright. Doing okay. They make me a little bit nervous, but they're not bad. They're actually, um... I want to say it was like a year ago. There was a mechanic for digging. You could dig in the game, and you could build bases underground and stuff. But apparently it caused a lot of lag, and their solution was... Because I guess it was just like a constant problem. Their solution was to make it so you couldn't dig anymore. Which is a little unfortunate, you know? Oh, this is actually a good cave for quartz. It's a little unfortunate, but, you know, I think their reasoning behind it was that the digging mechanic didn't offer, like... It, it wasn't a major gameplay component, if that makes sense. I'm gonna grab all this quartz, because... With how much of a pain it is to get now, and, what, and how much I'm gonna actually want to use it later, I'd love to have some more. Get out of here. Whew. That was close. We're going to have much closer than that in the future, I should say, but close for now. Alright. That's a good amount of quartz. I think in the future there's easier places to get it. But this isn't a bad spot for now, and... Honestly, I don't need much more than I have at the moment. I don't need more. You can basically use quartz to make glass, and you can use glass to make windows in your base. Which are obviously super cool. But... It's not necessary to have... Alright. Oh yeah, I need two, don't I? That's right, we're making the tank. I just need to get my tank out of that slot, and now I should be able to make it. High capacity O2 tank. And we went from, what was that, 75 to 135. 90 seconds of oxygen. Not bad. So, yeah, we're doing, we're doing okay. Let me make another wall locker. Actually, you know what? Let's make... I need one glass, which I can do. Let's make a bigger locker, and then we can get rid of that one wall locker. There we go. This locker is a lot bigger. go and we'll make that fish too so yeah we'll we'll be done here for today just uh let me know what you guys think and next time 
we're probably going to do a bit more exploration because the way the game kind of breaks down into, at least previously, subject to change to him, is that the end goal was to get to the Aurora. That's the very large spaceship that exploded. We've now got a number of more interesting and better end goals that we can work towards. But, uh, oh, voice crack. But that's, this is like mid-game is to go over there. It's not hard to do. Like, I could make a radiation suit relatively easily, I think. And then we could even swim over there, to be honest. But that's kind of dangerous. Um, once we get the sea moth, it's less dangerous, but it's still a bit dangerous. So we'll probably wait to go over there until we get the bigger sub. Which we'll explore later. So I think next time we're probably... I'm going to keep working towards getting the Seamoth. And maybe a battery charger. Because battery charger is useful. Because as you can see, our battery is starting to go down and I'll have to make a few more soon. We could also head for that life pod. Mm, if they're dealing with uh, snake things though, we might not. We'll go at least close to it and see. But for now, that's going to be all. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you next time for some more Subnautica. Bye!